Hello everybody, Caventia here, but you can call me Cav. We are here at DefenseCon, and so it's obviously Drake Day. Towards the end, we're going to be checking out Drake's new ironclad, so feel free to skip ahead if that's your jam. Let's get into it. So the first thing you'll notice when you come in is the Traveller rental kiosks. And not only can you rent Drake ships today, but you can rent every other ship that has been for sale so far. So if you want to grab yourself a Scorpius Antares for some reason, then you can rent it here for absolutely free. Let's start off with the Drake Corsair. It has a phenomenal amount of pilot firepower. Not only do you have the four size fives on the front, but there are additional pilot control weapons on the wings. You have have a turret on each side, a small airlock, and a very reasonable amount of missile payload on these asymmetric wings. In the moody back area, you can fit an Anvil C8R medical Pisces if you're extra careful, but now the medical Ursa has been released, you don't need to. You have a small engineering area, which gives access to a modest armory and the docking port that we saw from the outside. There's a small mess hall identical bunks for all the crew, including the captain. Access to the turrets is just... And access to the turrets is just behind the bridge. It also has a... Very cool sounding elevator, which goes not only to the surface, but also to the roof. On the opposite side of the room, we have the Cutty series, starting with the Cutlass Black. This is the best super starter in the game, in my opinion, and the ship I started with. A decent amount of cargo, a turret for your friend, and a whole bunch of gameplay opportunities. This ship next to it, with a little bit of the Tesla Cybertruck exterior coating, is the Cutlass Steel. This is the dropship version, and swaps out the cargo space for a bunch of drop seats and some mounted weaponry. The Cutlass Red is arguably one of the best bunker running ships in the game right now because as of the latest update you can now respawn on it. It swaps out the top turret for a radar dish to more easily locate your patients. It still has a modest cargo bay but some of the space is taken up by the two tier 3 medical beds. It has a docking collar access port so you can quick exit and is the only cutlass with a toilet. It also has additional bunks for your patients. The Cutlass Blue is the bounty hunting variant. Once again, you'll see the turret back and you have improved visibility out of the cockpit. It still retained a small amount of cargo area, but swapped out the medical beds for a whole bunch of prisoner pods. All of the Cutlasses come with a weapon rack and some internal storage. The Cutlass Blue also features a quantum dampener, which means you can stop pirates in their tracks. Or prey, if you are a pirate, of course. In the centre of the room, we have the Drake Dragonfly, a surprisingly tough little hover bike with seats for two. The Drake Vulture is an amazingly useful ship. This is actually the career starter ship for the salvage career and can be a pretty good little earner for you. It's not too expensive and you can basically start using it as your own little personal money printer. You have a couple of salvage beams on the front which can scrape the hulls of other ships and net you some recycled material composite which you can sell for a profit. The Buccaneer is an exceptionally good budget fighter. With really good manoeuvrability in the current patch and a decent firepower to boot, although it doesn't have a great deal of HP, it's not a bad starting fighter. This giant space snail is actually one of the fastest ships in the verse. It's designed as a data runner, and although that gameplay isn't in right now, if you want to get from point A to point B, there's no ships that can do it faster than the Drake Herald. Now I might not be the biggest fan of the Drake Cutter, but it is a loved starter ship. It's got that RV feel, and my biggest beef with it is the fact that the middle one here is the Scout version, and CIG said they wouldn't release ships unless it had the gameplay and well it doesn't have the gameplay yet but some people love this little bumblebee and last but by no means least we have the giant modular freighter known as the drake caterpillar the caterpillar until today was drake's premier freighter ship it features five modular cargo holds under this wing we have a tractor beam with a control station on top it has one large turret at the bottom rear, a habitation area, and a long gangway through the modules to another turret at the top. From the gangway you can access the cargo modules. 
And in the hollow room today, we of course have the Drake Kraken. This ship is not ready for a while yet, but the brand new ironclad will help in its development. It is going to be quite a beast. Let's check out the website. Over on the RSI website, we of course have them showing off a whole host of their wonderful existing ships, along with a few of the spoilers for the yet to be released ships like the Kraken. But of course, the fascinating new concept from Drake is the Ironclad. Let's check it out. Where Eagles Dare Meet the Drake Ironclad. This is Drake's juggernaut of free enterprise. And for me, when I first saw these images, it made me really think the scale of this thing was massive. The interior has a vast cargo hold of 1536 SCU of cargo. It also has some secure rooms up and top here. It has a whole bunch of turrets to help defend itself and has a detachable command module, which is also going to feature a quantum drive. So worst case scenario, you can take the most valuable stuff in here, e.g. the people and maybe some of that secure illicit goods and uh, cut loose if you need to. The interior features this massive cargo bay and on the assault version, which features a whole bunch of extra guns, that entrance is opened up so that some of the largest ground vehicles in the game, like the Nova tanks, can ingress and egress. And about 400 SCU worth of that cargo bay is taken up by a small vehicle repair section in the back. At Concept Warbond prices, you can pick one up for 400 USD, or using store credit, that would be 450, and the assault variant is $65 more, or 525 with store credit. And if you want more details, you can check out the concept document, which has, I gotta say, some of the most beautiful images, along with some more stats on the ships themselves, including their shield generators. Four size three is a big deal. Now, one thing I did find that was quite interesting about it is it's only 120 meters long, making it only a few meters longer than a caterpillar. So the nickname of Fatapillar does feel very apt for this ship. You can, of course, purchase or upgrade to any of the ships that were showcased today. And of course, the war bond of the day is the Drake Caterpillar, which can save you $30. What do you think of the Ironclad and the Ironclad Assault? Will they be making their ways into your hangars? So do you think the Caterpillar is still a wonderful ship? Or do you think that the Ironclad is going to put it to sleep forever? Do you think the Caterpillar's days are numbered? Or are you sticking to this interesting, unique and modular ship? Whatever you think, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Thanks for watching everybody and bye bye. Also, this ship has the largest amount of internal storage. Yoink. Nice.